me and my people is going on this page with me at the TV Let's Talk. I apologize on the noise you're hearing. I'm driving. So please be patient with me, but I have some things on my mental I want to get off. Um, over the weekend, I caught, in my opinion, a very disappointing interview by the American Doofus Channel by Barry interviewing on um, Delta, DEFCON, a former member of NFAC. Um, this interview was, was caught me off guard, caught it early, early, um, I believe Sunday morning, and I watched part of it, then I finished um, watching some more of it, but I couldn't go any farther with it because, I, then first of all, Delta gave out too much information, um, a lot of circumstantial information, and it also shows his deep dislike for Grandmaster J. Um, I call it a dis disappointing interview because I feel like. There is times when I feel very bearish and just not allowed to interview go as deep and far. And the severity of some of the things he was saying could lead to serious consequences if there's any truth to it. Um, and I don't like the fact that, you no, know, all due respect, there is a, a white man, right? And come off as somebody that's fighting for justice and fairness. But I don't know him that well to speak about him. But I just feel like a lot of stuff they was talking about was in-house stuff that was going on in, in fact, possibly if everything that dealt with speaking about have some kind of truth to it. And I just felt like it became it was so it was so much of mixed emotions coming out of Delta. It was so much he was talking about that was either extremely serious or too much information. And for me personally, I was taken aback by the whole idea of him going on this show and just saying what he's saying. What I learned so much about this interview, how Delta really viewed the movement, is definitely total contrast to how Grandmaster J explained what this fact is all about. And you can see not just the dislike, we can also see the hate as well as we see fact that these guys was thinking different, you know, entirely different, and I don't even know how to really start this off because there's so much to talk about, and some of the things that bother me and what comes to my mind right now is when he said Grandmaster J was um, not a war, he wasn't built like that, and then Barry charmed him and kind of, you know, agreed and said something, I'm like, Barry, first you don't even know who this, you don't know what Grandmaster J is all about, right? You don't know if he's a warrior or not. And I thought that was an insult, a big insult that Barry would even comment on something you don't know about. That's a personal fight between him and Grandmaster J. And, and the crazy part about when Barry commented, because he commented a couple times, and I was taken aback by it, right? Because it was like he was already assuming that everything. That's how I'm taking it, right? Everything Delta is saying about Grandmaster J, right? It's like he's agreeing with it. You know, he getting pushed back about Grandmaster Jackson for money to fund, help fund the legal um, defense and what have you. And something else he getting pushed back about, but a lot of that he was just riding along with it, sometimes chuckling and laughing and what have you, right? And, um, Delta made 
in his business, right, to really show what Ram SJ is not built like that. That he was the person who came up with this idea. He was doing the drones in Louisville. He was over the stuff. He was saying all this stuff, right? And not saying we should have known that, right? And I feel like a lot that he's saying that he did it. It's Stone Mountain how Jay said one thing I had this on his mind when he heard him speaking. Jay changed up I don't even know where to go with this, right? But it was always him, 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 and Jay fake. Him, 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 he did this, and Jay not built like that. Um, I don't know why everybody worshiped him and what have you. Let me get the record straight, right? I, I, wanna, I just want to say this. I was in Lafayette, Louisiana. And that was a serious, serious situation. And he said something about Lafayette and about the setup and what the gun thing and what have you. And he, I, look, I don't know if he was out there or not. But I didn't see no video saying he was out there. If he, he even made a comment about it, right? But that wasn't nowhere around Grandmaster Jay and I was on the other side of the phone. That was before he even started walking, but the way he was talking, it interview like he knew like he was there. I was there and I see something entirely different. And I just feel like I watched this dude speak. I watched this dude leave while he owned. And for you to say or uh, express to people viewing this video that Grandmaster J is not about their life. He's not about the gunplay. He um um he's more of a behind the scenes kind of person and blah blah and I mean this make a long story short, right? I this is all I'm trying to say is I have to really I have to really think about what I'm about to say because I just can't see nobody being on, right? And I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I see. I mean, this dude was in front of me. I mean, he was in the middle with everybody. It looked like stuff was getting a little chaotic and people passing around and their vehicles flying around and you know, driving and whatnot. And you can feel the intensity. I went to Walmart and seen two white men in like a um, on a Jeep or whatever buying on um, artillery and stuff from Walmart last year. And I mentioned that a couple of times in previous videos. So it was out there and it was very, very um um aware that Grandmaster J in fact was gonna be out there. But I seen this man in front of the line, not behind the line, and when stuff wasn't right like he said he'll he'll gonna he'll give a command. He'll tell him to stop. You know Get on one knee, you know what I'm saying? And be ready to shoot. I'm listening to this man talk like this. Right? At the same time, have his gun, have his um, automatic rifle, whatever his name. So I'm, I'm, I mean, he haven't proved to me, Delta, in this interview, the comments he making constantly about Grandma J not being about that. That he's really, um, I'm gonna I'm just paraphrase. He really scary. He really ain't about the gunplay and what had you. How he was turning out for him to do everything and whatnot. And I, don't, I just don't get it. I'm, I'm gonna just be real. I just don't get it. I didn't like the interview. I think he talked too much. I feel like a lot of things he was saying clearly, um, it's not what Grandmaster J been saying stands for. And he really envy. He say he don't he's not envious, he's not envious or jealous of Grandmaster J, but he is because he made his business say, well, he don't know why everybody worshiping Grandmaster J. He talked about the recent situation that happened in Louisiana for the unfortunate um, young brother that caught in the old um, found the sugar cane um um Rushed out on the ground, you know what I'm saying? Face blowed up compared to Emmett Till. And then talking about the recent, um, well, not the recent incident that just 
have one. We can so go with um Casey Goodson Jr. in Columbus, Ohio. And they're trying to see how Grandma did it took, you know, um the tension from all these most egregious and serious crimes and incidents and put it on him. And I'm like, Grandma didn't do this. <laughs> the government did that. And people feel um feel bad and sorry and pissed because this man is like locked up on some bogus BS after he had been in Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky, Kentucky more than once, that they would actually that they would actually lock this man up. And my, my issue is he can't take nothing from what's already going on. People are reporting about it or talking about it, but Grandmaster J was the only person we know that documented itself. Got in front of the media and whatnot. It spoke about exercising our Second Amendment, having a black militia, not just protest, but make it out a movement and get their attention. Ain't nobody else was talking like that. Yeah, we didn't see the new Black Panther Party on the scene here and there throughout the years, but they never got that much attention. And a lot of these guys who are established black militias, we never really heard about. And a lot of German forces with um in fact. And black people's proud of that. Black people was like, yeah, about time. You know? And here this man started a movement where he got so many people involved. But for Delta to come out of nowhere and be like saying the things he's saying. How he's just trying to tell Grandmaster J now. And I mean, he talked about the ages of in fact, and I'm not even surprised behind it, right? I mean, it's the, that that talk about the killing and all, but then that was overkill. That's in-house stuff that's supposed to dealt with. Talking too much for what? You try to get somebody, start supporting somebody who have showed this nature. The world that black people are sick and tired. Your problem, dealt, and I hate to say it, as great as you may be, as strong as you may be, you still may not have that effect. Grandma J can speak. He speaks very articulate, very eloquent, and he be on perk. Okay, and he forgot the day Malcolm X was killed. We keep talking about that. How many times you and I forgot something? You know, and even though um, people been throwing shade at Grandma J for that, they don't stop the buzz and things he been doing. This brother, and I said this before, is not without fault with, and not without criticism. Do I have criticism, Grandma J? Yes. But I'm not about to just be criticizing it just to be doing it. There's a time and place for that. For the black community to deal with. Not giving the enemy or nobody anything to say about it. Um, Delta is more towards everybody coming together. Black, white, and other. But Malcolm X and many leaders said that we can't get with anyone else until we get out with ourselves together. That's the reason why the black people, black people was just in the end. When segregation was prevalent and racism was so overt, black people thrived because they know we all we had, we all we got. When integration kicked in, we dropped our guards. We were so happy to show them ahead. We better than what you think we are. Um, we are great people and so forth strong. And whites, the government all them say, okay, yeah, all right. Blah, 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 for you know it. We got bamboozled. Taking funding from us. Denying us grants. Fair 
Regardless, cross the board with housing, education, jobs, etc. Um, black people have been talking for the longest. It's best a nation about creating their own nation within a nation. And if we can't do that, then at least own as much as we can own. And we can one day build a nation of black people that can rely upon building themselves and not with this government. This government refuses, despite history, this government refuses to pay as reparations for slavery. Every black successful town that was destroyed by angry white mobs with the sense of the government and destroying successful prosperous um, communities like the Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street. We're dealing with a situation where it's been exposed that crack cocaine has been put in our neighborhood by the government. We watch many black people be addicted to crack cocaine, still rob and kill their own while the government get away with one of the most one of the most egregious crime you can do to your private to your private citizens in this country. Um, it's so much I can talk about in my mind is money, right? But I don't understand this interview. I don't understand what Barry was trying to accomplish. Um. He said he come from underground and explaining what all happened and whatnot. And I feel, I feel, I feel bad for Delta to a certain extent. But I, this is how I feel. Now let's let's I'm be on the one with to be real, right? If you're not right, cool, man, you partners, right? We got an idea. And if things don't go right, and I'm seeing some moves ain't going down. I'm about to pop the line and back up, right? I'm about to stop fooling with you. And if you're trying to hurt me, that's next level stuff. I'm not about to talk about it. With family, friends, whomever. I don't be, you know, in that mindset where that's how you want to be, what this is how it's going to be, right? If we can't meet in the middle and talk about it. And I feel like that's where it should have been at with him. Not him going on a YouTube channel and putting all this incriminating and legally damaging information out that not only affect Grandmaster Jay, but him and other people. I just feel like giving him the benefit of the doubt and say if something's true or what have you, if it's any truth or if all of it's true, I'm going to give it all of it's true, he could have did it differently. But well, the last thing you need to do is try to put Ram SJ on trial for public opinion to work against him and bring him down. For one, he don't really support the fund of Ram SJ legal defense. Even though the white guy, Barrett, said he supported him. This guy in Ardman, why he don't support He said, well, a million dollars is too much. And he was talking about how they had everything set up for donations and with that. I remember, he said Grandma J wasn't poor at the time. I remember Grandma J said he didn't want the people to ask him, offer money. He said, I want your money. He said, I don't want your money. And, he was, and I felt like what he was doing was showing people, like, you're giving money to people that's not really doing nothing in the community to help you. You know, where does money go other than their pockets and self-serving on these desires or whatnot, right? But when he decided to ask for money, because people I realize he did study for money, or getting ready to study for money, we don't talk about having a million, uh, million, million man black on me, right? Oh, uh, when your black men on, how you want it, have to have a salary every month. We did the math and everything. We're like two, three thousand, I could stand to be corrected, a month. But he, he didn't start asking for money or donations. 
Once he came with the right plan, then you felt comfortable with. But Delta was criticizing the fact that they had all that in place for receiving donations. And Grand Master Jim was like, no, no, I mean, you know, we, we don't need to do that right now. And what I'm hearing is Delta wanted to do this, but Grand Master Jim didn't want to do that. Delta wanted to do this, and Grand Master but Grand Master J didn't want to do this. Delta said this, but Grand Master J said no. Um, Delta started. Um, Delta started this idea, but Grand Master J stole idea. It, it, it's just a, a back and forth fight inside Delta about what happened with him and Grand Master J and why he feel like. Should, um, the black community should support him and Grand Master shouldn't get the help he's um, seeking to get for legal assistance in that he's a fake and a fraud and I'm, I'm like I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm like it didn't go say oh he was telling he, he had mentioned some of each ex she was talking about um about um do we need a leader to follow and what not? I mean, I, I, I seen that video, I haven't had a chance to see it, but I seen the title of it and what not. And I'm just paraphrasing the title. And he was commenting on the fact, he said he didn't agree, he, said he knows she support Grandma J. Um, and that's something he didn't really agree with, but he was saying something about, picking out something she said about the leadership and how we are self-destructive. I'm just paraphrasing all this, right? That every time we have a leader or somebody that come and play that's trying to do something, you know, that we try to tell him now. And me, she actually is talking about, if you don't know, that um, she's a supporter of Grand Master J. And we got the, we got the Tarika City, Nikki Villain, the Hara on um, Bay from um, Morris City, um, constantly like trying to tell Jay now and speak bad about him, right? So, um, he was saying that in reference to him and black leadership and um, Delta Bro, um, that up about BJX talking about that. With him and other black leaders, but not for Grandmaster J. So it still was kind of productive to even bring that up when BJX was really talking about that regard with Grandmaster J. And probably history, historically, how a lot of our black leaders was told down by other so-called leaders of influential people in the black community. So, but I'm just um, I'm just annoyed by the idea that he's making his business to target Grandmaster J when he have so much other things he can be doing. And from the looks of you know, him saying come from underground, he's going through a lot. So my heart goes out to but I hope he get it together. But right now it's like you're being kind of productive trying to attack Grandmaster J. It's looking very um bad for you because you're looking, you appear as though you're, you're, you're jealous. You're hating. Um you keep and then, then, then this is what I wanna really just emphasize on right you saying all these things that Jay not really all about and how how you, you shifting his positions because of a lot of things you were saying and talking about so my point is why haven't you now Jay and, and I know he said he um that called me and stuff where um this account got hacked and Somebody, girl, says she hit him and all kind of stuff, right? And I don't know who's dealing with criminal charges for that. I just feel like if you such this brother, man, that got all this information and you know what you want to do, why haven't you done it? You know, forget Grandmaster J. And, and, and if you want to do what you got to do, do what you got to do. But stop having this man, man come out your mouth. It don't look good. It looks it looks really bad. And I don't think 
and I'm, I'm gonna be real. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't think the black community will fully support those that hear them speak with Barry because he was talking about Tino a lot of these white militias. I gotta say Tino, let me, let me not say that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna say he was talking like. Well, I'm, I'm gonna say team and I, but unifying everybody. And I feel like that's gonna be a big mistake because we did the unity thing. We still do the unity thing, and it's not unifying with everybody. I'm talking about all the races. We, we, we have to deal with that almost every day of our life from going to work, stores, and what have you. And, and what I mean basically is, even we wanna wanna deal with people that we know don't care for us. Or treat us bad, you know. We still have to deal with them in some kind of way or not, you know what I'm saying? And Delta talking about, you know, how you got a little Mexican or whatever, or Spanish or whatever, white in his, in his own family. And how, you know, he wasn't about what Grandma G was talking about, right? And how he wanted to push for for all of us to come together despite this that nothing to do with time with it, you know what I'm saying? But my problem with black people have been all about fighting is this time tyranny. Tyranny. But the problem is, how can we deal with this evil corruption when you got the people of our peers that's white and of other backgrounds that is also working against us. They speak down on the government, but they turn around when black people do it. They condemn us. They side with the government or work with the government to make sure we don't have or whatnot. And it just don't make no sense that the way he's talking about unifying everybody and this, that, man, look. A line has been drawn in the sand a long time in this country. Donald Trump exposed something we already knew, but we ain't knew to what degree. And it's no time to be talking about or concerning ourselves with working with another race of people that don't want to work with us. And those who do want to work with us, they're not even looking at it from our standpoint. They're still looking at it from that whitewash brand, um, that whitewash um, mind controlling type aspect. Whereas, even when you communicate with them because they don't know the black experience, they don't know what we have really been through, they're coming from a whole other perspective that we know have been very, very complicated to us. For, I'm, I'm going to say, as a people in our real progress. Who run the government? That's how I remember white people. That's how I remember the systemic racism. Last time I remember black people are so far, far, far behind with the financial gap is crazy. For the concern that black people are more targeted than anybody and because sub be subjected to harsh arrest and experience and possibly experience some kind of police violence. Um, I don't get it. I didn't like this interview. View. I don't think that Barry should um, have the interview if it was gonna go as far as it did. I knew a lot of things that come out that I think shouldn't have came out. I think that if Delta, life felt like he was threatened, he was going to take care of his business. If he felt that that was um, a situation where he had to defend himself, um, I felt like a lot of things he talked about was just over the top. And I felt like if somebody didn't want to deal with him, or they, or they or not in agreement, just stop dealing with it. But the more you talk about it, the more you bring it to social media or, or, or YouTube, what have you, the more bad it make, it look, make you look. And I 
and I feel bad for this brother because I really want to believe that he had good intentions. Just like we want to believe that Grandmaster did have good intentions. And to watch how our Grandmaster just constantly targeted. I mean, because he know people that this man broke. And I just feel emotional as men. We just too emotional, especially as black men. And, and we tend to take everything there, even when it could be a disagreement. It can be a, a split on ideologies and whatnot. I think I spoke enough about this. Um, it was on my mind since the other day. I had to think about it. I said I wasn't going to touch it. I said I was just going to let it marinate and whatnot. But um, nah, um, I, I want to talk about it and get this out of the way. And hopefully, um, I have um, engaged with you. I have engaged with you and, and, and really like touch you in the sense of as these issues in our community, they are not perfect. But we have to talk about it. We have to be objective. And we have to really like resolve the things that's holding us back. And infighting and hate has to stop. So thank you for listening. Um please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button. Get Get some of the leaders on content when they drop. Thank you. Have a blessing.